Hi, everyone. My name is Ricky Mondello, and I am a software engineer and manager at Apple. My pronouns are they and them. I'm really excited to be back at PasswordsCon, and I hope we get to do another one of these in person together real soon. At Apple, my team helps make the iCloud Keychain Password Manager, the password manager that comes with every iPhone, iPad, and Mac. We also take care of the system-wide password autofill feature that makes it easy and natural to use a password manager, whether that's iCloud Keychain or an app from the App Store. What I'm here today to talk about is an open source project that my team launched in May of 2020, which, believe it or not, was only six months ago. The project is called Password Manager Resources, and my goal today is to tell you about what it is, let you know how it's going, and why you might want to get involved. You know that thing that happens on a website when you're creating an account and you ask your password manager to create a unique, strong password for you? And then the website turns around and says that your password isn't compatible? Whenever this happens to me, I get a little bit frustrated. And I think that this experience could be bad enough for someone that if they ran into it enough times, they might be tempted to go back to keeping all their passwords up in their head rather than using a password manager. We at Apple care about our generated password compatibility with websites so much that we use a tiered approach to address this. First, we've shipped support for a proposed web standard that gives websites a way to communicate their special password requirements. We recognize that some services may have legitimate reasons for these restrictions, so we want to make sure that we could accommodate them. The language to express these constraints is called password rules, and we design password rules to be easy to read and easy to write. To go along with the support for password rules in Safari and in iOS apps, we built a tool to help developers craft rules. It validates the input as they type it and generates conforming passwords in real time, all in the service of helping you make sure you have exactly the right rule for the website. That tool lives at developer.apple.com, and that page also links to documentation for the rules language. And yet, it is a big web. There are so many websites out there, and many haven't gotten around to adding password rules. So, the second way that we ensure generated password compatibility is to build website-specific rules into iCloud Keychain. We've been using rules like these to generate more compatible passwords for years at this point. And this strategy was working for us. Every time somebody told us that a website wasn't compatible, that the website rejected their password, we'd write a rule, push it out to our clients, and no one would run into that same exact problem again. The only thing that we wished is that we knew about problems sooner and that we could distribute more rules to help the compatibility. And so that was actually the genesis of the open source project. Rather than keep all of this data to ourselves, and keep all of the work of gathering it to ourselves, we decided that collaborating with other password managers and anyone else who was interested, effectively distributing both the work and the benefit would be awesome. And we decided that that would be awesome not just for our product, but for the world at large. And it has been. So with the rest of our time, I'm gonna tell you about the data that the project has and how a password manager might make use of it. I'll give you some stats about how the project is doing and talk a little bit about how you can get involved. The project is about something called quirks. A quirk is a term that we borrowed lovingly from the world of web browser development. It refers to a website-specific, hard-coded behavior to work around an issue with a website that a browser can't fix in a universal, principled way. If the website needs a special behavior to make it compatible, a quirk would allow the browser to act in a non-standard way, all in the service of the user's experience. It's the same thing here. 
but we're talking about a password manager instead of a web browser. Let's look at what one of these sets of quirks looks like. Here is the set of password rules data. As you can see, it's a list of domains and corresponding rules that would help a password manager generate a compatible password. As of this recording, there are 176 domains in this list, and that data is there for any password manager, for any platform to incorporate into their product, or for any authentication and password enthusiast to contribute to. To make it easier to get started with the data, we also released a JavaScript implementation of a parser for the rules language. It's the same parser that's on the developer tool I showed you earlier. A password manager could use this code directly or as a reference for building their own implementation of a parser. In fact, just recently, the folks at Agile Bits open sourced a Rust parser for the language, which is pretty cool. There are four types of quirks in the project, four types of website-specific data. We've already talked about password rules. It was the main motivation for the project's existence. Something I'll add is that the project's goal is only to track a website when it's not expressing that data itself. So if a website adopted the password rules attribute and somebody noticed that, we would want to remove that website from the quirks list. Next, websites with shared credential backends. This data could be used by a password manager to offer to fill credentials saved on one domain on a different domain when we know that the domains actually share the same credential backend system. This data could also be used by a health checkup feature in a password manager to not tell the user that their password on two different websites is reused when in fact they are reused on two different websites, two different domains, but it's the same credential system and there's nothing that the user should do or can do to fix that. The change password URLs quirk maps domains to full URLs where a user can go on the site to change their password. Really, that's it. This is the quirks version of the well-known URL for changing passwords. If you're not familiar with the well-known URL for changing passwords, it's just a URL path that's known that a website can implement to redirect to their change password page. It's really handy for a feature of a password manager that helps users fix up their compromised, weak, or reused passwords, like iCloud Keychains, security recommendations feature. Specifically, iCloud Keychain helps a user change their password for a website. And when it does that, when a user invokes that, what we do is we try to load the website's change password URL. And if that doesn't seem to be implemented, then we'll fall back to using a quirk from the open source project. And if it's a domain that's not contained in the data set, then we'll just take the user to the website's homepage so that they could figure it out themselves. This is a good strategy. It works really well and helps users change their passwords faster. Just like with password rules, if a website is using the relevant standard, in this case, the well-known URL for changing passwords, we would want to remove that website from the quirks list. And finally, Websites where two-factor authentication code is appended to password is exactly that. Rather than input a 2FA code separately, it's tacked on to the end of the user's password. A password manager could use this quirk and this data to prevent auto-submitting passwords when filling them on particular domains to give the user a chance to provide their 2FA code. Okay, so those are the quirks. Now, let's talk about how the project is doing. So far, we have had over 100 contributors who have made over 240 commits since the initial release of the project, which is really cool. There are folks involved who are affiliated with at least three non-Apple password managers. Beyond them, there are a lot of enthusiasts and folks who just ran into a problem on a website and decided to fix it themselves. 
The number of password rules we're tracking in the project has more than doubled, now up to 176. And we have a wild 69x increase in the number of change password URLs. Okay, so I'm, I'm cheating a little bit here with this stat because we only started with two URLs and now we're up to a bunch, but it's still really cool. So it's going well. If you're an enthusiast or a developer of a password manager, we would love to have you use this data or contribute to it. And when it comes to contributing, a pull request to the project can be as simple as adding a single rule. Most of our commits look kind of like this one, but we're also totally happy to review larger additions and bulk additions to the dataset. If you go down the route of adding a password rule, you can test it using the developer tool that I mentioned earlier. Due to the data-driven nature of the project, there really isn't any special tooling that you need locally. You're just hacking on JSON files. So it's easy to get started. Okay, so to summarize all of this, quirks might feel a little unprincipled or dirty at first, but they can meaningfully improve users' experiences with password management. They can make the difference between frustration and delight. And as I've said a few times, the web is really big. We learned that collecting and maintaining quirks works way better when we're collaborating together, sharing both the work and the benefit. And finally, I cannot say this enough. You are welcome to contribute to and use the data in the project. It's MIT licensed, which means it should be usable in a lot of different contexts. And we would love to see you there. Before I let you go, just a few resources you might want to check out. There's the repository on GitHub itself, then the validation tool I referenced a few times, and then the spec for the well-known URL for changing passwords. The last link, the YouTube video, is the 2018 PasswordsCon talk that I gave on healthy password practices. It goes into more detail about password rules, the well-known URL for changing passwords, and my team's philosophy around collaborating with other password managers, which if you're watching this, you might be interested in. And finally, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out to me directly on Twitter, at Armandello. I would be happy to help anyone with anything related to the project. All right, that's it from me. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope that you're all hanging in there. Take care.